Today, under liver function test, we are going to discuss about an enzyme which is found in the liver that is known as AST or aspartate aminotransferase, formerly known as SGOT or serum glutamic oxaloacetic transaminase. So, these are mouthful of names, but let's don't get confused with these fancy names. Let's discuss about these enzymes. Basically, it's very easy to understand that if there is any hepatocellular damage, these enzymes are elevated in the blood. This is the basic concept. So now, let's get into details. So, the normal value for this AST for adults is around 0 to 35 units per liter. In case of females, the value is slightly lower than males. In elderly population, the value is slightly higher. Now for children, the values differ a lot with age. 4 to 5 days of age, it is from 35 to 140 units per liter. Less than 3 years, it is from 15 to 60 units per liter. From 3 to 6 years of age, it is 15 to 50 units per liter. And 6 to 12 years of age, it is 10 to 50 units per liter. And 12 to 18 years of age, it is around 10 to 40 units per liter. This enzyme, that is AST, it stays inside the liver cell. So, when there is any damage to the liver cell, this enzyme gets released into the blood. So, the elevated levels of AST in the blood suggests hepatocellular damage. Now, you must understand that the level of AST depends upon the time on which the blood was collected from the patient after the injury, I mean hepatocellular injury. So, in case of acute liver injury, cellular injury, after the 8 hours of time, the AST level will elevate in blood and it will reach its peak position on 24 to 36 hours. Then it will again come to normal within 3 to 7 days. If the cellular injury is chronic in nature, the AST level will persistently be elevated. In case of acute hepatitis, the AST level, it might rise up to more than 20 times the normal value. In case of acute extra hepatic obstruction, maybe due to gallstones, the AST level quickly rise up to 10 times of normal value and it falls swiftly again. In case of cirrhosis, the level of AST in the blood depends upon the inflammation. If the active inflammation is more, the AST levels will be more in the blood in case of cirrhosis. Serum AST levels is often compared with the ALT level, which is another liver enzyme. So, the AST is to ALT ratio if it is greater than 1.0, this may be due to three conditions. One is maybe due to alcoholic cirrhosis. Number two, liver congestion. Or number three, that is due to metastatic tumor of liver. If this ratio is less than 1.0, it might be due to acute hepatitis maybe due to viral hepatitis or infectious mononucleosis. This ratio is less accurate if the AST level is more than 10 times of normal value. There are some other conditions in which this AST levels might rise transiently like acute pancreatitis then acute renal disease, any musculoskeletal disorders or trauma can lead to acute rise in AST levels that is transient. In case of red blood cell abnormalities like acute hemolysis or severe burns can lead to elevation of these enzymes. So there are certain conditions which can cause decrease in AST levels like pyridoxine deficiency seen in beriberi and pregnancy. If there is severe long-standing liver disease, this can lead to decreased AST. If there is uremia or diabetic ketoacidosis, these conditions may lead to decreased AST in the blood. So what are the factors that can lead to increased AST levels? Number one is exercise. And due to some drugs, this AST level may be increased like antihypertensive drugs, cholinergics, digitalis, erythromycin, isoniazide, methyl dopa, opiates, oral contraceptive pills, salicylates, statins and verpamil. 
So these are some commonly used drugs. And any other hepatotoxic drug can cause increased level of AST. So now you might ask, is fasting required for this blood test? The answer is no. Fasting is not required. The blood tube that is used is red in color and it is advisable to record the date and time of the test as with time the enzyme level in the blood might change. So for future correlation, the time and date record is very crucial. So now let's see the conditions where the AST level will rise. So the conditions we can classify as liver diseases, number two, skeletal muscle diseases, and other miscellaneous diseases. So under liver disease, you can say hepatitis, then cirrhosis, drug induced liver injury, then hepatic necrosis, hepatic metastasis. In case of necrosis, in initial stages only, you will see the rise of AST. If there is any hepatic surgery that has happened, if there is in case of infectious mononucleosis with hepatitis and if there is any hepatic tumor. So these are the causes related to liver disease which can lead to rise of AST levels. Now the skeletal mus muscle diseases like trauma, any recent non-cardiac surgery, any severe burns, any muscular dystrophy, history of recent convulsions, heat stroke, any myopathy or myositis and in case of intramuscular injections, it can lead to skeletal muscle damage, injury and lead to rise of AST levels. Now about the miscellaneous diseases. So miscellaneous diseases, there are only two that is acute hemolytic anemia, hemolysis and acute pancreatitis. Now, what are the causes which will lead to decrease in this AST levels? One is pyridoxine deficiency that we see in uh, beriberi and pregnancy. In case of acute renal disease, diabetic ketoacidosis and also in case of chronic renal dialysis patients we will see decreased AST levels. So that's it guys. Thank you for watching.